some time ago, I did a full review of the Demco Free Ring, and this came to me in AUS 10A steel. And I really like this knife, and at the end of the review, I referred to it as a burly bushcrafter. Yes, definitely a survival knife, but also very capable of a lot of the bushcraft tasks. Well, since that time, Demco has sent me another Free Ring. This one is in Magna Cut steel. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this knife, keep watching. All right, just to be clear, I'm not going to be doing a full review of the Free Rain in Magna Cut steel as I did with the other version in the AOS 10A steel because these knives are identical in terms of geometry. It's just the steel that's different between the two of them. So I expect that both knives will perform very well in the tasks I would normally do, such as batoning through lengths of wood, creating uh, notches and points to, make, to create a tent peg, and feather sticking, and maybe even scraping with the back of the spine. The knives should perform almost identical. What I wanted to see, though, is just how much better the Magna Cut steel is over the stock AUS 10A steel. So that's the intent of this video. Now, how this is going to occur is, well, let's see. I didn't want to make this artificial. I didn't want to cut cardboard into one gut doll. I didn't want to cut hemp rope into one gut doll. I wanted to use it out in, a, in the woods doing some a somewhat realistic test, if you will. So what I'm going to do is there is a, a downed oak tree not far from here. It's quite a big tree and probably about 10 inches in diameter. And I, what I'm going to do is just chop into that tree using a baton and the knife and just start creating a V-notch in the tree until each of them dull. I know. How realistic is that? I'm not so sure, but maybe you could stretch it a little bit to say, well, yes, you could use these knives for chopping wood or cutting lengths of wood for creating shelters if you're in a survival situation. So I guess we can stretch a little bit to say that it is somewhat realistic. Otherwise, how am I going to test the two steel? Certainly not in just day-to-day -day activities. It would take forever to get a comparison. And that's only if I didn't sharpen them each time I went home, which is what I do anyway. I always touch my edges up on the knives before I get them home. All right, just before we go to that testing, though, I want to just focus in on the two knives together. I'll go over the specifications very briefly because, of course, everything is in the original review for the AUS 10A version, and then we'll get started. All right, what I thought I'd do is just give you a few close-ups of the Magna Cut version of the Free Rain while I just quickly go over the specifications for the knife because, of course, everything will be in the video description. And if you go back and watch the other video, you're going to see all the same information again. So, overall length for this knife, 9.88 inches with an exact 5-inch blade. It is 3 sixteenths of an inch thick stock, and it weighs 7 point two ounces. And I mentioned this is made from Magna Cut Steel. Now let me just bring in the original version so that we can show the similarities and the differences. So let's start with the blade itself. Yes, both knives are a high saber grind, but if you look at the original, the blue handled one on top, the flat portion up towards the spine is a little, a little taller than it is, oh, how am I going to do this? I've got to get it out of the sun than it is on the Magna Cut. What that should do is change the geometry of that primary grind so that the Magna Cut version is a little thin as it comes down towards the edge to where the secondary grind starts. In reality, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference in performance. I use both of these knives, and if you handed them to me, uh, you know, with my blindfolded, not that I would want to take a knife from somebody blindfolded, but if you did, I wouldn't feel the difference at all in the handles, and I don't think I could feel the difference in actual usage, provided, of course, they're both same sharpness level. So that is one difference between the blades. And here's the other difference. If you, again, look at the AUS 10A version on top, it has a continuous drop point to its edge, almost spear point, just a little bit above the spear point, very functional, whereas the new version in Magnica is a clip point with a swedge, unsharpened, but with a swedge on it. So just a slight difference, and I don't know that there's any functional difference between the two of them. One thing it does provide, though, is just a distinguishing feature that makes it very quick to pick up, because, of course, you can get all these knives in various colors on the handles, and it's nice, other than having to look at the steel on the blade itself, that you can tell the difference by looking at them this way. Now, here's another difference I want to point out. As you will notice, this is, first off, Dempco Free Rain making sure you can see that. And when I turn it around, it says AUS 10A 
Taiwan. So this knife was made in Taiwan. That's the original. And when I show you the new one, it is Demco USA and Magna Cut. So the USA version is made in America. So I know that's important to some people. But again, here's the thing. It is not quite twice the price. No, actually, it's only about uh, a third of the price more to get this knife. That, to me, doesn't seem like such a bad deal to pay just a little bit more for the Magna Cut steel as, I, as you would for the AUS 10 a steel. Now, the other thing I'm going to say about this, because I know someone will comment on it, this knife is regularly available on Demco's website. This one's not so available. Sometimes it's in stock, but they sell it so quickly, then they have to do another production line, and it can be out of stock for a period of time. I guess it just depends how long do you want to wait before you get a Magna Cut version. All right, as I mentioned before, I gave you some close-ups of the knives. The only way I can think of to test these two knives is to use them in a semi-realistic scenario out here in the woods. And all I'm looking for is basically edge retention. Theoretically, the Magna Cut steel is a much tougher steel, and it should withstand a lot more hard use than the AUS 10A does. Uh, it should. That's at least in textbook theory. It should. And it should retain its edge that much longer as well. That's why it is the steel of choice for a lot of knife makers these days, because it's a great balance between toughness and edge holding. Well, the only thing I can mention or think of doing is doing that cross batoning on a hard piece of oak and just see how long it'll take before one dulls. I have some paper that I'm going to do a pre-test on it just to show you how sharp it is. It's not to show you how sharp these knives can actually get. They can both get very sharp if you're good at your sharpening skills. It's how long will they stay sharp. So I'll go with the AUS 10A until it starts losing its edge, and then I'll go with the Magna Cut version until it starts losing its edge, and we'll just see how many whacks into the tree it takes to do that. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the log that I've chosen is a downed oak tree. It's something that came down over the winter. It's actually still got last year's leaves are on the distal end of it. So it's not old by any means. It uh, would still have been a good tree or a living tree had it not come down over the winter. Uh, I've used this log for another test with a different knife, but for this one, I've moved further out on the log itself because, uh, well, the knife is shorter than the other one I tested. In fact, how wide is this? No, it matches the knife. I don't know. Can that show like that? A five-inch diameter log. It's suspended off the ground. I don't have to kneel down quite as much. So I'm going to start out with the AUS 10A version. And uh, uh, I'm going to try and keep count. Uh, it's a little challenging. I'm just wailing away on this to see how long it goes. My experience is this can be really tiring work. Still, it's the test that I have. Let's start with an initial test uh, sharpness. Yeah, all right, any question there? No, not at all. That's a sharp knife. Now, we'll just put that aside. I'm gonna put gloves on because I found vibration with the, the baton. It can be significant after a number of whacks. And you're, if you're questioning the validity of this test, you're welcome to because honestly, this is not something I would do on any kind of a regular basis. It's, again, just a durability test with something that you could consider semi-realistically. Uh, I'm going to try and go for 10, 15, and then we'll check the edge. And once I feel like there's difference in the edge, I'll check it on paper. All right, let's get going. That is hard wood. And that knife went in a long ways. Try to open the V up a little bit to give me somewhere to swing this baton. All right, edge test, let's see what we got. I don't know. Still biting my finger. Not feeling anything. All right, I'll go a little longer, see what we can do. I know I have been impressed with the AUS 10A steel and other tests, so I expected I would be in this test as well.
I'm stopping because I'm getting tired. That's the reason I'm stopping. Oh, baby. All right, where's my paper? Let's see what happens. Okay, not quite as clean, but not bad either, actually. All right, 10 more times on this knife, and then we're gonna switch over to the other one. Okay, one more test. You know, any knife that you can do that with is a survival knife. That's a real test for this knife. It's not a, something I would do with my knives on a regular basis. I knew that this knife could take that kind of heavy use, but again, it wouldn't be something I would subject it to without very good reason. Yeah, right there, okay. Way out here, way out in that edge right there. That's where it's starting to, but I still can't see it. Well, maybe there's a glint. Or maybe that's just dirt. That was just dirt. Yep, but it's there. Yep, okay, so that's that knife. Now, give me a second, I'll dig out the Magna Cut version. Magna Cut version, oh man, the joy of a sharp knife. I can whittle this paper. Let's see if it's gonna last that. Oh, okay, once again, just to be as fair as that I can be without actually being scientific about it, I'm gonna to try to create a notch about that big right here next to the, uh, that, the first one. And uh, when I get about that deep, then we'll look and see if there's any difference in the blade. Edge retention. All right, here we go. Put the glove on. Grab my baton. Okay, uh, just looking at these two wedges, I know they don't look the same. Uh, this one is not as far forward as this was in the, the camera view, but it's that far back. And, and the reason is, is I almost whacked the camera with my baton, so I just had to start moving the wedge backwards. <laughs> you know, Magna Cut is a steel of choice for a reason. I can't find anything wrong with that. All right, I'm going to do some more and then we'll put it to paper. Okay. Much wider now than the original. No, nope. nothing, zero. You wouldn't think I just sweated down off 10 pounds trying to do that. All right, uh, not definitive. I won't be able to say so many cuts, so many chops makes it that much better. What I can tell you is it outlasted the edge on the AUS 10A. How much better? Hard to tell, because I just cannot <laughs> do any more of this on there. So I think we've seen enough that at least for me, I can wrap this video up. All right, after all that work, what do I conclude <laughs> about comparing the AUS 10A from the original Demco Free Rain with the Magna Cut Steel? on the Demco Free Rain. Well, I'm actually very impressed with the AUS 10. It was in the original review. I thought it was a great steel, held up well, uh, took a good edge, sharpened easily, very, very resistant to rust was my findings on it. 
And it's still a really good knife. It's actually one of my favorite heavy use knives. I'm going to put the, you know, qualify that. It's still what I consider a burly bush crafter. It may be a little small in the survival knife category, but it's plenty big in the bushcraft category. It's a good crossover. That's the best way to say it. How about the Demco Free Rain in Magna Cut? Well, Edge Holding outdid the AOS 10A. It outdid it but I can't say by what percentage. If it's 50% better, 100% better, three times, four times better, I can't say because I just didn't get to a point where I dulled the Magna Cut steel. I guess what I'm saying is the Magna Cut steel is better than the AUS 10A. How much better? That's going to be up to you. Do you know, it's only 50% more to purchase this knife. So I, and the other knife that I reviewed, I said, if you have the budget for the more expensive steel, by all means, go for it. If you don't, don't feel handicapped by having the lesser steel. Well, in this case, I'll say exactly the same thing. I'm perfectly happy with the AUS 10A that's on this steel or on this version of the knife, but I would definitely pay the extra money to get the Magna Cut version of this knife when they're available, just because it has that much better edge holding. I didn't damage either knives, and that was that was hard wood. I certainly didn't damage either knives, despite the fact that I really quite wailed on them. And uh, again, I'm not recommending this. This was just an endurance test. It's not something I do on a regular basis. I wouldn't suggest anybody repeat it to see if their knife can stand up to it. I knew the design of these knives would stand up to it. It was just an edge test, right? That's all it was. Now, the only thing I'll say about the Magna Cut version is that I'm probably gonna have to run a file down the back of the spine to take that rounding off and get a sharp edge back so that I can have an edge that's great for scraping with. And I'm actually not looking forward to that because if it was that tough a steel just the way I used it, I suspect it's gonna be a lot of work to get a file. I may actually have to take it to somebody that has a proper belt grinder. I don't have a good belt grinder, so they can put a good clean edge on it without uh, messing it up like I'm likely to do with a little tiny hobby belt grinder that I have. Okay, that's this test. You're welcome to criticize it by all means. I'm sure I could have come up with something better given time. I just wanted to do it out here in the woods with something that theoretically was something you might do with a knife like this but uh, you're, you're welcome to criticize it if you feel the need to. And uh, yeah, uh, the specifications all in the video description, the comparison, no links, because really that's gonna be up to where you live to see uh, where you can get. I'll put the link to Demco, but you'll have to uh, see where, if it's somewhere you can purchase other than Demco themselves. Ah, if you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that pathless travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.